Älä ole vihainen ihmiselle, joka johonka sattuu. Hey there, my name is Sean and this is Suicide Noted. On this podcast, I talk with suicide attempt survivors so that we can hear their stories. Every year around the world, millions of people try to take their own lives and we almost never talk about it. We certainly don't talk about it enough. And when we do talk about it, many of us, including me, we are not very good at it. So one of my goals with this podcast is to have more conversations and hopefully better conversations with attempt survivors. Now, one of the other goals is to help more people in more places feel a little less shitty and a little less alone. I hope we're doing that even in a small way. So however you are involved, in all of this, thank you. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to talk, please reach out. Hello at suicidenoted.com on Facebook or Twitter at Suicide Noted. You can check the show notes to learn more about the podcast, including our membership. And of course, remember this. Keep this in mind. We're talking about suicide on this podcast. We don't hold back. So take that into account before you listen or as you listen. But I do hope you listen because there is so much to learn. Today, I am talking with Celia. Celia lives in Finland. And she is a suicide attempt survivor. Hello up in Finland, Celia. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, now. Yes, you. Let's just say Ooh. yes for the whole conversation. It'll be a very different kind of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh it. Oh my like, God. It's the bold guy from Carolina. I like your listening skills. You get it. You get it. No one gets it. Yeah. Yeah. And also my threats clearly it. So yeah. how do I pronounce your name? Celia. Celia. Yeah, that's close enough. It's pretty hard because it's a Finnish name. So <laughs> it's a Finnish name, which means you're in Finland. And you know why that makes me especially happy? Because I'm the first person from Finland. Literally. The Finland. first human being. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Celia is not the only person. If if our audience is wondering, no, she's not the only person in Finland. But she's the first person to join me here for this. Yes. Pretty sure people are attempting suicide there, not just you. Actually, the all the suicide rates are pretty high in mm. Finland, even though they call this the happiest place in the world. Who's they and how do they define happy? Come on, we don't. I actually I actually don't know who right. just decided. That we right. are the happiest country in the world. Because we're not. Right. We're mostly alcoholics and depressed bitches. Memo title. Done. Alcoholics and depressed bitches. I can't. That's the greatest book title ever made. I'm sorry. Done. Yes. Well, naturally, you're depressed because, and you drink. It's dark a lot. It's fucking cold. Yeah. I mean, it's cold. It's dark. And you're one of the weirdest countries. I mean that respectfully. Because... Here's why. As an American, I say that like like everyone wants like anyone in the world wants to hear more Americans' opinions on anything. But you're this interesting country. You're not Scandinavian, but you look Scandinavian on a map. You're yeah. not like Russian, but there are some cultural things connected to Ru- you're so in between everything it feels like. Want to know more about what exactly makes Finland Finland? I actually have no answer to that. Like, I don't even know much about those countries, but just conceptually understand the premise of them. Not to take anything away from Finland, but if you're not disagreeing with me, I'm feeling like it wasn't the worst thing in the world to say. You in Helsinki? No, no I am not. You're north of Helsinki, aren't you? No. Uh, yeah, I'm north from Helsinki, but I live in eastern Finland, in Kuopio. Is that even weirder than the rest of Finland? Yes. Yeah. Most of most of the other people in Finland, they think that we, I think it's called like Savonian people, we speak a little bit differently. Mm. Uh, they say we we talk longer and bigger, and mm. I feel like I feel like we are kind of like more friendlier than most of the Finland. You seem friendly. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Celia in Eastern Finland. Let's be really clear about the sort of geographical. So you are 
All right. So you're you're up in the north. Anywhere in Finland is up in the north. It doesn't matter. And you're in yeah. the east part of the country. You're probably not too far from water. Nope. It is December, so it is undoubtedly cold out. Yes. And by the way, to all the anyone in the audience who's annoyed at my word choice, Celia agrees with me about her country and her people to some degree. So stop, just relax. We can call people in places a little weird. I'm weird. Celia's a little weird. I'm sure we'll get into it. Yeah, and, and let me let me tell you, in Finland, we think you Americans, you are the weirdest people on yeah. the entire planet. That's yeah, that's objectively true. <laughs> so I I I actually understand why because there is so big difference between yeah. everything. Tell me this and then we'll get into your stuff and we're going to start with the alcoholism yeah. and depressed bitches because that's the greatest. Um if you would ask 50 Finns, we'd say Finns, Finns, 50 Finns. Yeah. What makes Americans or what about America is especially weird? What would be some of the more common answers? Guns. Guns, yeah. It makes no sense. It 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 doesn't make any sense. Here we have to go to basically just take a um, course of some kind. I don't know because I don't have gun. So we have to take a whole course to learn about guns and the laws and everything. Right. I wonder if it like makes sense that the guns, if guns are easily available or more easily available, the use of guns to end one's life is probably more common. I'm sure that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So in Finland, it's probably other things, people. I'm going to guess it's probably pills, hanging, something maybe weirdly Finnish. I feel like one of the things that people do is like drive a car to a tree or something like that driving the car aggressively into something yes yeah yeah sometimes on this podcast i want to ask about something i've read or i've seen online yeah and then we could get into all of the all about you here's what i saw today today i saw a video on cnn it's a major news outlet right yeah and there's a man who I believe has been arrested, not 100% sure about that, because he is supplying people with a machine they can buy somewhere out on the interwebs. And he's figured out that there's a certain gas that's typically used for livestock. I don't know all the details, but in a certain quantity, a certain combination, blah, 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 it will end your life and it will be rather peaceful. You'll die. Yeah. But he's getting, uh, now that it's on CNN, it's a much bigger deal. And he, the, the, the authorities are after him. And I was wondering, I'm not necessarily feeling for or against that, but I'm wondering, do you think somebody supplying a way for people to end their lives peacefully, or let me, let me just say not in pain, should be arrested? That's a really hard question. I'm not actually sure. I kind of feel like, Everybody has their own choice with their lives. But there are also situations where people are not thinking rationally. That's the part which makes me a little bit Mm -hmm. hesitant to say that it would be right. And also because there are so many things that could go wrong, like people using that to other people. Oh, yeah. It brings up a whole nother set of problems, right? Yeah. It it, it just <laughs> reminds me of the gun thing from a moment because it's like, at least with that thing, you have to order it. It probably takes a few days. You got to set it up. Like with a gun, you just go and do it. Yeah. If it worked. Anyway, all right. So you're in Finland, right? We've established that. Mm-hmm. You're in what looks like a rather small room. And we've decided that we're going to do this in English and not finish this conversation, right? So do you call a mix of English and Finnish? English? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Can you please say the word suicide in Finnish? It's in Murha. It's in Murha? Yes. Was that was that decent, my pronunciation? Yeah. Yeah, it was. We could do this in Finnish. Yeah, we could, but I, I can see there are a little small problem. I think we would be limited to like one or two words. Yeah. And if we want to have a conversation, probably we want more than that. All right. So how did we find each other? Well... About a month ago, 
I was in a really, really dark place. And I, I was basically looking for sad playlists to listen to sad music. Because I felt like crying, but I couldn't cry. Mm. I typed on the search bar in Spotify, suicide, your podcast came. Yeah, and can you, and if you had found it, and indeed it was sad music, and it was me singing the sad music, we wouldn't be talking because you'd be like, this guy's awful. He's terrible. Uh, yeah, I have not heard you singing, but I feel like you are better at what you do yeah. now. No, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> so so, so why did you reach out? Because listening to sad music and talking to a bald man in North Carolina are very different things. Yeah. So when I found your podcast, I instantly clicked on it because, well, I I had no idea what it was all about. So I was like, okay, let's just listen to one episode and go from there. I ended up listening to like the whole evening, five episodes. Mm, somehow I got the courage to tell my therapist uh -huh. about my suicidal thoughts the next day. Ooh, so so just to be clear here, wow. So the fact of you listening to these people share gave you something so you would share your attempt with your therapist. Yes, I was basically thinking about killing myself at that point. And I felt so ashamed about my thought. Listening to all of these people just talking openly about their attempts and their thoughts about suicide just just gave me the courage to go and talk to her. Yeah. Oh, well, then I ended up in a psych ward. So. Oh, so so you were in a psych ward between... When did you reach out to me? It was about a month ago. So you heard the podcast, you reached out, then you went to a hospital. Yeah, I reached out. Before I went to the hospital, yeah. How long were you in the hospital for? I was there for one and a half, half week, almost two weeks, actually. Did your therapist send you there? Actually, I asked her if it was a possibility for me to okay. go in the hospital mm -hmm. because I didn't feel safe. Because I knew if I, I had even any worse nights, I will kill myself. How was the hospital stay? Shitty. It was shitty because I feel like only good thing about it was that I was not at home where I could like actually harm myself. But also, I don't feel like I got anything from it. I feel like it was just a, just a place where they wanted to hold me so I do not kill myself and they don't get to, they don't need to like write fucking many papers to say like, yeah, we let this girl die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could argue, like, if you were that close to dying before the hospital, right? Like you said, it kind of did help because you're here and you've been not dead for at least the two weeks after the hospital. Yeah, it was something like it was. Okay, yeah, this has come up a lot. I made new friends in the hospital. Mm. And those are the people who actually made my stay even bearable. Most of the staff there, they were really rude, just didn't give a shit. There were people harming themselves and they didn't give a shit. We told them like, hey, I think this person is about to hurt herself. Can you do something? No, but we are not allowed to go into her room because then we are punished. All right. So so here we are talking. But you, you did you answer the question? Why do you want to talk about it? To no, other no. Yes. So I wanted to talk with you and share my experiences with my suicide attempts because I felt like I got so much out of all of those conversations that I listened to that I wanted to, if I can help one person to like maybe survive the two weeks or maybe feel a little less shitty. That's nice. Nice of you. For real. So how many suicide attempts do you have? I actually have a notebook here because I needed to check out some stuff. So I have, I'm not actually sure how many attempts I have because uh, I feel like I could say three, but also I could say that I have 
many more. Right. I feel like the difference between those that I call attempts is the fact that I really tried. I really wanted to die at that point. You're 22, which is technically your 23rd year on the planet, but we don't have to get into the math of it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> complicated for my brain. So, you know, simple American brain. We're just not that smart. You know that, though. You know that. I mean, it's just... <laughs> how old were you for your first one? For my first attempt, I was 15 years old. I was thinking about, like, jumping off the cliff. Was there, oh, there was a specific cliff you were thinking about? Yes. Okay. It was a place where I went with my friends a lot, which is kind of ironic. It is. But I wanted to be in a place that I enjoyed for the last time. I went there, but I didn't, I just, something came over me and I was like, nope, not today. Maybe tomorrow, maybe day after it, but not today. And thankfully. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, I didn't jump. Well, hang on a sec. So how long were you at the cliff for that day? Maybe two hours. All right. So you're in that space. Okay. Are you trying to talk yourself into it or out of it? I don't really remember. All I could see was that I was hurting. I could yeah. feel that I was hurting so badly that I just wanted out. And I was also, at the same time, I messaged one of my friends that I have always been thinking what it would be like looking at the sun for the last time. Mm -hmm. Well, she understood what I was about to do, messaged me back a little bit later. At that point, I was back at home, but I feel like I I tried to talk myself into it. But when I went to the, like, basically looked down, saw all of the trees, I was like, holy shit, that's a far way down. Looking down, you see trees. Yes. This isn't like over the water. No. And you would have definitely died. Yes, definitely. Do you remember how long you had been thinking about doing something like that before you walked to the cliff? At the age of 11, I started to hurt myself by cutting. Actually, I have always been really anxious and also really depressed because I have always felt like the world is a bad place. There's so much bad things going on. I feel so much pain, not only my pain, but the world's pain. All of the people that are suffering, always. So basically, that's the first time that I was... I kind of heard from television or something about self-harming. I was like, well, I want to try it. I got a very dull knife and basically it did nothing. I was 11. I didn't understand the fact that a dull knife cannot go through your skin. <laughs> sure. I remember praying like every every now and then, like, please, God, just take me away from this world. Did you tell anybody? No. Some people at 11 or 12 or 13, or uh, like some people are like, I'm thinking about high school or maybe college or like where I want to live or what, I, what kind of work I might want to do or I, maybe I want to travel, whatever, right? You're thinking mostly yeah. about dying. Yes. At school, there was like, where do you want to be in five years? And everybody like wrote something, just like you said, something about studies or like where they want to live or mm -hmm. what kind of bed they want or something. And I just said, I don't want to be in pain. That's, you nailed yeah. it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Interesting the way, how old were you at the time? I was probably like 13. It's just an interesting way to answer it for several reasons. But one of them is they asked you where you want to be, not where you don't want to be. Yeah. But you're like, I just don't want to be in pain. Basically didn't care where I was as long as I wasn't in pain. What about if you were in America? No pain, but you were in Texas, which is like super America. Well, <laughs> I mean, why not? Okay. Why not? Go for it. I, If I had to guess, there's probably fewer than 100 people that live in Texas that are from Finland. More Swedes and Norwegians than Finns. Maybe it's because Finns don't leave. They love it there so much. Yeah, we love our country. Even though you're all, as you said, alcoholics and depressed bitches. I mean, it's an interesting contrast. I, I'm intrigued. Yes. So do you think, one last question, and then I want to ask you about suicide attempt number two. We'll just talk about the three, and we'll talk about some other stuff. 
When you use the word depressed and anxious, do you think you were born that way or like shit happened or both? I think shit happened. I was born born in a very messed up family. My uh -huh. father was an alcoholic or actually is an alcoholic. My mom is a Christian. Because most people would immediately say like, oh, alcoholic, that's a problem. Like almost anyone would agree. Like that's a problem to be one, to live with one. And then Christian, is that... <laughs> I'm wondering which one is worse. I basically just saw and experienced a lot of things that nobody, especially a child, should experience. And um, also, I was so, so afraid of hell. I was so afraid of going to hell. I was so scared, like doing anything. Well, I didn't know if I was doing something wrong. I fucked up. I'm going to hell now. That's scary. Especially for a small child. Where do alcoholics go? I don't know. I don't either. They're just in pain too, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. I have forgiven my father. I'm not mad at him because he's alcoholic. I'm more like sad for him. Yeah. But also I need to protect myself so I do not keep in contact when, with him. Uh, and your mom too? With my mom, I I do keep in touch, but sometimes I would prefer not to. And I can explain it more later. <laughs> yeah, but are they still married? No, no. She, so he's still drinking? Yeah. Is your mom still a Christian? Yes. Does she want you to become a Christian? Yes. Are you a Christian? I was, but I feel like, first of all, I have always thought that being gay is wrong. Well... Here we go. Yeah. Because, well, I am not straight. <laughs> right. That was clearly implied, right? Yes. So you're yes. saying if you're gay and you believe in, in that ideology or that belief system, then you are bad or you're going to hell, something around that. I don't believe in that. Yeah. Because right. I think that if there is God, I don't think she, he, they, who they are, like going to be mad at me. For loving someone else, no matter their gender. Sure. You could also make the argument like if you believe that it's just so weird because if you believe in God and God made you, well, God made you, you. So like then it's just a strange argument. But then people would say, well, no, God didn't make you that way. You made a choice and you've that's the devil. It's like, I, I oh, my God, I, I cannot with that shit anymore, because like, let me tell you, I have with all of those prayers when I prayed that I just want to go to heaven. Yeah. I also pray that please, please God, don't make me gay. Please let me fall in love with a man. Oh, this is when you were like uh, early teenager? Yeah, because that was the first time that I actually even realized that was a possibility. Yeah. 15 years old, you walk away from the cliff, you go back to your life, and 99 times out of 100, I am pretty sure life remains challenging. Yes. There were some good times, a lot of them actually. There were like five years that I didn't try to kill myself. Like just thinking about it or just? Absolutely thinking about it. Yeah, oh, yeah? ideating a lot. Wow. Uh, I was self-harming a lot. Oh my God. I was in so much trouble with my mother about that one because, well, I understand all the worry and stuff, but still, please don't be mad at someone who's just in pain. Oh, ain't that the truth? But yeah, my second attempt was when I was 20. So mm -hmm. two years ago, I overdosed. Prescribed medication or other kinds? Prescribed. And I was living with a roommate and I actually stole some of her mm. medication too, which I'm so ashamed of. We mm. have talked this all through and we are still friends. I took all the medication that I just found. I just realized what I had done. I was like, oh my God, I have to call for help. Mm -hmm. And I called and the ambulance came. They took me to the hospital. Well, they, they just gave me charcoal and some meds to wake me up a little bit because, well, I was... I was losing consciousness in the morning. Tay, let me go home. Okay. So right. they basically just didn't care that I just tried to off myself. 
they were just like, okay, if you say so, you can go home. It's tricky though, because like if they keep you, they're going to end up sending you to a place that you know sucks anyway. So what do they do? They just what? What are you supposed to do? I understand that point, but it's it's really tricky. Yeah, yeah, and risky. You know, but for the, like, I get it. They, yeah. My initial reaction when people say like I was just held and let go that later that day, I'm like, okay. So basically, my friends took care of me after that because okay. I went there like in the evening and they released me in the morning i was still so foggy from all the meds that i had took and i slept a lot Mm -hmm. and my friends basically just i was not alone for like more than five minutes for the first week because my friends just wanted wanted okay yeah i understand they wanted to keep me safe Mm -hmm. they were scared that I would be doing something like that again. But I believe that if a person wants to kill them themselves, they will ki- kill themselves. Yeah. No matter what other people say or do. Yeah, probably true. Yeah. Now, you had said about five minutes ago, don't be mad at people who are in pain or something like that. Yeah. Any of your friends mad at you? No, they're mm. not mad at me. I remember uh, my friends actually, they light their way into the hospital i love lying yes <laughs> because only family could could come and see me and also that was because uh corona uh-huh right right right, right. yeah so they lied to themselves in and i remember seeing two of my friends and i just started to ball, ball my eyes out because i saw the hurt on their faces because they were so scared of losing me but they were never mad at me they were just like i do not want to see you it at in that state again understandable i had like charcoal all over my face and my clothes and everything <laughs> wait, wait, wait 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 why was it all over everything because i was so foggy and they wanted me to drink like maybe two or three bottles of it oh uh, you just spilled it yeah i just spilled it and nobody was there to clean it up. What's going on with the Finnish healthcare system that nobody cares? This is the happiest fucking place on earth. Are you kidding me? Yeah. There are some good places, like good hospitals, good ERs. But I feel like this one that we have here In is Eastern. not the best one. Yeah. And actually, uh, the funniest part about this this um, hospital is that it's called Gus. K-Y-S. Yeah. Like, Kill yourself. Ooh. Kill yourself. K-Y-S. Not the title of your memoir, probably, but maybe. Yeah. So um, after that one, I feel like I fell in a really, really dark place because I felt like even when I I was trying to kill myself, the doctors and the healthcare professionals, they didn't really care. My own therapist, she was so nice about it. She was like, I'm I can see you're hurting. What do you think if we try to get you in a mental hospital? And I said I do not want to go. She said, "Okay. I w- I won't force you because you are at the moment you seem like doing okay. You seem to be thinking pretty straight, but all of this time I was self-harming a lot, cutting is that why you Cutting, wear long sleeves or is that because it's just cold out? Uh, actually, I am wearing long sleeves right now because I actually was in a hospital a couple of days ago because mm. I needed to get stitches. For the cutting? Yes. So you cut on your arms typically or your legs? My arms. Then there came all of this. My mother got to know somehow. I don't, I don't know why and how she got to know about my attempt. She was mad. <laughs> Don't be mad at people in pain. We have talked about this with her a lot. And I know her worry comes out as an anger. But that's not... You can't just explain like, Oh, I was so worried that I just yelled at you and yeah. told you that you are hurting everybody else. No, I'm hurting myself, you know. Then there came the first two times that I got so deep that I needed to get stitches. Mm-hmm. And that was when I first asked 
my therapist, please help me to get in the psych ward. Oh, I see. I see. So like over a year to two years, you're struggling and eventually it leads you to the hospital, which was recent. No, this was, uh, I have been in the hospital twice. Okay. So the first one was after the uh, second attempt. They tried to get me to the mental hospital after my first attempt, but my mother told them that there was nothing wrong with me, so I couldn't go. But well, yeah, uh, after the second one, I and after the cutting and all the stitches and everything, I just asked them, please send me to the mental hospital because I want this to stop. I need this cutting to stop. And it actually stopped for a year and a half. Oh, cool. Then there came all the overdoses with meds. Uh, not like in a suicide uh, way, but using the meds wrong. Because of my Tourette's, I have really... Well, you have like more powerful drugs. Yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. Because of the all of the ticks that I do. And sometimes I get these tick attacks, which are really exhausting. Oh. And also, just before this, uh, my second attempt, I was diagnosed with Tourette's. So you were still doing the ticks, but you didn't know what it was? Yeah, from my childhood. No one ever questioned it. They just thought I was weird. What, what, you know what's fascinating is um, you didn't start ticking until you started talking about it. Uh, I have very like small ticks with my hands but for 45 minutes it's interesting that yeah. you you sound great your english is clear everything's clear and i always can edit so you're good you're great it's just an observation yeah. oh wow okay so literally the word when you started said the word t- tourette's you ticked and then you ticked. yes okay. yes wow. it actually triggers it if i talk about tourette's it might trigger my ticks not all the time sometimes yeah. i just when I start talking about New York, where I'm from, I'm a little bit more of an asshole. It's the same idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here you are. You're alive, and we can agree on that. And I still have the third one. Oh, I know. Believe me. Well, <laughs> you're. I oh, I know where we're going. Oh my god. So you went to a hospital. You were. It sounds like you were playing around with med stuff without it really being an attempt. But you're saying that you have these drugs. Yes. I imagine in that time, some of the other attempts that you could talk about, which we probably won't, but there's a longer list of, like you said earlier, like it's, there's three main ones, but then all the other ones. Trying to ease the pain. Yeah, of course. With meds. And there were a couple of times that I went to the hospital just to like get checked out. So how, so how long ago was suicide attempt number three? Little less than a month ago. Oh. So after I contacted you. Okay. So when you found the podcast, you said you were in, this is from the beginning of our conversation. You were in a very dark place. You were looking for sad songs. You found this, you listened to some, you eventually reach out, not eventually, probably quickly after, but then you attempt and you're then you're in, and, and you're in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, I started to cut a can about two months ago. Actually, there have been like five times that I have needed to go to hospital because of it in the past two months. The third attempt was when I tried to cut my wrists so I would bleed to death, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I took some meds to make me sleepy so I would I would fall asleep yeah. and then yeah. just bleed to death. Right, 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 right. Yeah. As opposed but, to like freaking out and going to a doctor or the hospital, you would be dead. Like more than the first one, and I don't know about the second one, but like you really did want to die. Yes, I really wanted to die, but something still I don't know I don't know what, what to call it. Maybe the universe or something just I just left my my home, my apartment. Yep. And started to walk towards the hospital. I do not remember anything from the walk from my home. It's about like 30 minutes walks. And I was bleeding the whole way. I remember the next morning that I woke up. Uh, I was at home because I basically just went there. They stitched me up. Like stitched like your wrist up like this? 
they know that you didn't get in a fight with somebody who cut you. They know that you were trying to hurt yourself. Yes. Okay. They know. Right. And so they the asked a lot, like, if I was trying to kill myself. And well, I lied. What'd you say? I said that I just wanted to... I didn't want to be in a, in an emotional pain. So I wanted to feel the physical pain. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that was enough for them to let me go home. And I walked back. Still don't remember most of it. Mm. I didn't tell them that I had took some pills. But I, after that, I contacted my friends the next day. And I said, I cannot be at home. I need to go to the mental hospital. But Somehow, I needed to wait for a week to get to the mental hospital. So I stayed at my friend's place for a week. How was that? It was, it was great, actually. Right. It was better than, better than a me mental hospital. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we actually had fun. And that's the, like, the worst part of it was that I felt like normal. I felt okay. While I was with her, mm. she's my childhood friend, and we're still best friends. Somehow, I just I'm I always I feel like every time I am with her, I feel like I'm okay. Like there is no worry in the world. Man, I wish everyone had someone like that. Um, can I make an assumption that, given how recent it was that you tried to end your life, that you are still somewhat suicidal? Yes. How many people do you have in your life to talk to? Uh, two or three. How many people know that we're talking? One. Friend? Yes. How many people know about any of those three attempts? I know a few do. Many knows. Okay. So many. I have actually I actually have no idea how many knows. The last one only like couple of knows. Okay. Only my like bestest friends know. But about the two earlier ones, I have been really open about it about them. I have not talked about like when and where and how but i have just said like yes i have tried to kill myself mm -hmm. i imagine when you do that once in a while you're gonna get a weird comment right yeah some people are joking about it and yeah. i'm fine with it as long as they are like like close to me yeah and they know that i'm okay with it if it's just some random dude just walking walking towards me and just staring at my scars and saying me like, whoa, you didn't succeed at that. Wow. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, fuck you. Right. What's the word what? equivalent for like, fuck you in Finnish? Haista oh. vittu. It's like, smell fuck. But fuck is still used, right? Yes. Because it's such a good word. It's a good word to say like to somebody that you're angry with, I think. Yeah. But uh, best best swear word in Finnish is perkele. Oh, did you just say that to me? Yes, I did. What does that mean? What is it? Does that have a translation at all? The devil, or okay. something like that. But it's just it's just because it sounds it sounds good. Did you ever get a uh, diagnosis formally or professionally that you agree with or diagnoses? Yeah, I have a long list of diagnoses. PTSD, depression, um, OCD, anxiety disorder, and panic attack. I don't know, disorder. Tourette's, but that's sort of a different category. Yeah, yeah. How many different medications do you take every day? Three. And two of them are at the highest doses they will prescribe them. I'm not fucking around. No. And I really wished I didn't have to take meds, but... They keep me alive at this point. Yeah. So I am okay with <laughs> eating meds as long as they help me just even a little bit. What do you do to cope? Like, so you take meds. I know you try to find sad music sometimes. You cut sometimes or you used to cut. Like, what else helps you when you're, yeah, what else? How do you, that's the word, cope, cope. I have a cat. Okay. My cats and other animals, I don't have other animals but my friends have like they have 
all sorts of animals like horses and chicken and sheep and oh. rabbits and okay yeah so i i really like animal because they do not judge that is true i don't think so no i don't think so you like where you live yeah i like it here Good. it's peaceful what are your days like well at the moment i am on a sick leave i've been for maybe two years now yeah so basically just trying to see my friends trying to even get up from my bread bread oh no bed the bread room <laughs> yes i try to go outside every day and just do something but thankfully my cat will wake me up and he will tell me that it's his time to get his food man i need a cat like that i need a finish cat Remind me to get my food. Anyway, I'm glad your cat helps. So were you or are you studying something sort of post high school? Uh, Yeah, I was studying graphic, graphic designing, but I needed to, needed to just stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my yeah. mental health got so bad that I couldn't go to school anymore. Yeah. When you say you're on sick leave, does the government help you? Yes. Good for them. Yeah, I'm I'm really thankful for it because otherwise I would not be able to survive basically. And I wouldn't be alive if I needed to go back living with my mother. That's not an option. In some countries, for sure, because there's nothing like that, you know, people do die or they're homeless or they suffer, for sure. Do you know that it's also ironic because you had said KYS but just the idea that you're Finnish, like, you know what that means in English, right? Finnish. Yeah. Like, over the end. Yes. You said also earlier, your father is an alcoholic and Nor uh, Finland is filled with alcoholics and depressed bitches. Now, are you an alcoholic? No, but I have self-medicated with alcohol. Are you a depressed bitch? Yes. <laughs> when you use the word bitch, you could be a man or a woman or any gender, I assume. Yeah, that of counts. course. Yeah. Do you have a partner? No. I do not want anyone to get into this mess called life with me right you. now. Maybe yeah. someday. Never know. Pink and purple pill. You know about that? I'll always say it again because the audience might be a first time listener. Yeah. Pink and purple pill. You take it. It doesn't have to be tonight, but peaceful death. Nobody knows it's a suicide even. And actually, more recently, I've been going to add, like, you can, I'll, just, I'll give you, like, the dream, any dream you want before you officially check out. That'd be pretty cool. I know what I'd be dreaming about, but I'm not sharing that with you all. So, um, anyway, would you take it? I would. But does your mood change or something change? Maybe if I asked you later or in the morning or next week, you might say no? Maybe. There are good days. There has not been a day where I wouldn't have been suicidal or i wasn't thinking about suicide me wanting to die is just wanting to get out of this pain i feel like the only reason why i am still here is because i i'm thinking of other people's pain i don't want to cause them pain but if they didn't know i had chosen it for myself they wouldn't know that I caused it. They wouldn't know, correct. Did you find the sad music you were looking for? Yeah, I have one playlist that I <laughs> listen to. Okay. Your mom's really Christian? Yeah. Christian is based on the Christ, right? Jesus Christ? Yes. You think Jesus gets mad at people for being in pain? No. And I'm, I'm actually sure that if there is Jesus, if there is God, if a person commits, dies by suicide, they will understand. They yeah. will be there and hug them first thing. They won't say, what the fuck did you do? Right. I gave you life. You're, yeah, you were in pain, but you have just, you should have just sucked it in and lived yeah. with it. Do you you are not the only one who's, who's in pain. Just suck it up. Oh, yeah. What are the, some other things? We call, I call those platitudes. I don't know if that's the right word for it. What else have you heard other than like suck it up or you're not the only one? that are common the best memories from the psych ward one older staff member said that young people do not want to die that's just a joke wow well first of all it confused me yeah it's really confusing because like why the heck are you working on this field 
in this yeah oh my god yeah yeah but also it was pretty hurtful because i'm still young and i do have days i do have times when i want to die yeah. you cannot tell me what i want <laughs> this this will come out eventually like it takes a little time because i go in order yeah. usually so let's say it comes out in a couple months do you think you're going to be alive to hear your voice on this podcast i hope so i really do i'm really trying i actually wrote on my diary a couple mm-hmm. days ago that i am trying my hardest to survive till my next birthday and make it the best birthday i've ever had because normally birthdays have been really hard because mm. i have always felt like just another year of pain yeah when's your birthday on april 2nd does that mean that you were born in 2001 yes so when 911 happened you were like an infant yes it's crazy some of these have already come up but i always ask around about myths i feel like this one comes up every time you ask it and I think you know it already. So it's selfish. Is selfish. Yeah, yeah, it's the big one for sure. Yeah. One of the big ones, yeah. Yes, it's one of the big ones. And I can I can see that. I have lost a person in my life for suicide. But I do not think that it was selfish on her part. Like I, I feel like she had all the right to do it. I can understand that people are in pain. But if I die, no matter w- what caused my death, People are going to be in pain. I hate hearing it gets better because you cannot tell me it gets better because you don't know. I have to learn to live with it. It's the whole point of me trying to... I'm not talking about healing anymore. I'm talking about learning to live with my mental health problems. I don't think life is supposed to be easy. Mm -hmm. I think life is about the little happy moments that we have. All of those little moments with people that make you laugh. 100%. In winter, now, like how much sunlight is there? Because you are pretty far north. I could say like four hours. Like summers are so much easier for me. I know it's it has something to do with all of this darkness. I I don't believe that like like humans are designed to live in Finland. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> in that. Right. There's some animals that are thriving in Finland. Yeah. But for humans, we're not so sure. I don't think that we're really designed for this. <laughs> yeah. Mentally. I think maybe physically we can survive, but I don't know about about the mental state of Finnish people. So whoever decided to call you the happiest people, maybe they're defining the word happy differently than most people are defining it. It's just clickbait, man. Yeah, like we have a good edu- education system. The whole education is free. And and we have, like, I am on a sick leave. You got it. Yeah. You have a good safety net. You have a good safety net. Yeah, yeah. And you have three things, but it doesn't necessarily mean... It seems to the outside that we are doing so great, but something's still wrong. (laughs) Uh, Is there anything else you want to share? I feel like I want to, like, I do not know the meaning of life, but I just feel like we are here to enjoy the little moments, the small moments. I try to see the beauty in even the worst not not the worst things i cannot say that we are talking like how it's cold and dark all winter but actually it's really pretty because it's clean white and and all the trees are covered in snow and it's pretty like if i if i live to old i don't know 80 right and then someone says to me like yeah you are going to like suffer from this illness, you'll be sure I will kill myself. Yeah. I rather be no, no, I won't be dying painfully in a nursing home if right. I have the chance. <laughs> well, you actually had three different methods. So do you think the the one that would work is a different method? The fourth and maybe final one? Hopefully not, but you know, if you wanted to go, okay. I know the method I would choose. 
Is it a secret? It's not a secret. It's kind of a secret, but I oh. know it will work because I know people who have killed themselves with that method. I know it absolutely will work if I ever choose to do it. And so it's 838 there, right? Yeah. And it's dark outside and it's cold outside. And your Well, cat... it's been dark outside the whole day. So yeah. Right. It's dark the whole day. <laughs> the cat is somewhere and it's a Monday. So we're going to say goodbye in a moment. And then what are you going to do? Yeah, uh, I will make some food and maybe just listen to some music. Not too sad. Hey, Huomenta. My cat just woke up. Oh, we got a little like real finish there. Yeah, I just told him, oh, good morning. <laughs> awesome. So you're going to relax. I don't know if you actually relax, but you'll make some food. You'll listen to some music. Yeah, I will. I will most of not just drink coffee. I know. If you know anything about Finnish Finns, you know that we love coffee. Oh, I love coffee too. But so you're a weird sleeper then probably, right? Yeah. I I feel like because of my ADHD, coffee doesn't really like affect affect me a lot. Well, thanks for talking. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I feel like you said this in one episode. Um, It feels kind of wrong to say that I enjoyed talking with you. Right. about this subject because it's not supposed to be an enjoyable subject but thank you you're welcome and thank you and don't be mad at people who are in pain yeah don't be mad at people who are in pain it's not that complicated how many <laughs> words is that don't be mad at people who are in pain you don't even need the who eight nine words mm-hmm. before we go can you say that exact expression which i really like in Finnish. Ala ole vihainen ihmiselle, joka johonka sattuu. Uh, all right, cool. Thanks again, and um, we'll thank talk you. Soon. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. Ciao. Bye. As always, thanks so much for listening and all of your support. And special thanks to Celia up in Finland. Thank you, Celia. If you are a suicide attempt survivor and you'd like to talk, please reach out. Hello at SuicideNoted.com on Facebook or Twitter at SuicideNoted. Of course, check the show notes to learn more about the podcast, including our membership. However you are involved or support us, thank you. And that is all for episode number 198. Stay strong. Do the best you can. I will talk to you soon.